Hey friends, welcome back. So a lot of you have asked over the years, hey Mike, can you do a video about what you eat in a day? And to be honest, my diet is pretty boring, uh, but I want to I share with you what I eat. Now this is not to say that you should do exactly like I do. Uh, I'll talk about the rationale about why I choose certain foods and what I eat in a day and so forth. But as someone who is pretty physically active, I'm now 39 years old, um, I eat like mostly a low carb keto slash carnivore style diet, although I am not opposed to having fruit. I am not opposed to in season vegetables. I'm not opposed to carbs and tubers. So uh, some of that is in here. But generally speaking, on most days, on most times of the year, although I do like to oscillate my diet in and commensurate with the changes of seasons, this is what I eat. So let's go through it. Uh, first, let's talk about the feeding window. So I normally eat about two meals a day, unless I'm being super active and then I'll have three meals a day, or like a dessert with some protein and some um, yogurt. So we'll talk about that. But usually my feeding window, and I think all of you should learn this, listen to your body. When you start to get hungry, that's when you should feed. Um, so I, I usually get hungry around 10, 10, 30, 11 in that ballpark. So my window, generally speaking, most of the time is between 10 and 6 p.m. I try to eat earlier uh, in the day and start my fast earlier. Okay, you've heard me talk about that before. All the science on early time restricted feeding and there's a lot of benefits there. So how do you break your fast? Well, you know, and I guess technically I do break my fast earlier in the day uh, because I have coffee with just a touch of MCT powder. So it's, it's not a whole lot of calories, probably 50 calories. So Am I screwing up autophagy? I'm not really that concerned about it. I like the MCT powder in the morning with my, with my coffee, but I don't add a lot of sugar or anything like that, right? So anyway, first meal, and I try to switch things up a little bit. So sometimes, you know, what we often like to do uh, is save our food. So this was like leftover dinner from last night. What's a little bit that's left, a little bit of grass-fed lamb. So we love lamb, it's fatty. Uh, there's a local uh, lamb company here in, in Snoqualmie, Washington, and also in Oregon. So the company uh, where we buy a lot of our food, the grocery store, PCC. Um, my daughter loves lamb. It's fatty. So this is a thing when it comes to a, a lower carb carnivore style diet. Go for the fattiest meat possible. And that's why it's important to get locally raised, uh, pasture raised, grass fed, all of this because uh, toxins are stored in the fat, and if they're eating commercially genetically modified grain and all, all that, you know, that can be potentially stored in the fat, antibiotic residues. So this is where quality comes in. Now we normally buy from a, we'll, we'll get like half a cow from a grass-fed farmer uh, locally, and that just ran out. So that's what we have here. In fact, what we do at leftover from last night's dinner, um, we love to slow cook some of the fatty cuts here. So this was a thicker, uh, I think this was a chuck roast, so that's what was for dinner. So utilize the slow cooker, the crock pot, easy way to set it and forget it, right? You can put a little onion in there, a little garlic, um, and put it on slow cook, and you're using water and heat. Let me Before I get ahead of myself, that was dinner. Let's talk about how I would break my fast. Is usually leftover dinner um, with some olives, with some ferments, and whatever carbs are in season or no carbs at all, depending upon whether or not I'm going to exercise. So a lot of people want to know, what do you eat every single day? But it, it depends upon that day's activity. So for example, today we're doing filming, we're doing podcast recording and all of that. So I haven't had any food. I don't want to be bodening my brain and my, my mind and allocating energy to digesting food. I want to focus on you know, manifesting, uh, creating good content and, you know, being easily retrieving words and vocabulary and things like that. So I haven't had any food, right? But if I were to go to the gym at lunch, which I normally do, I would have a little bit of, you know, protein like leftover or eggs from the backyard, chickens, um, small plug backyard chickens are amazing. Uh, because you get this diversity in the type of eggs because different chickens lay different eggs. So we have cream leg bar. We have um, this, I can't remember if this is a little Easter egg or bantam chicken. We have, you know, some, uh, this is a uh, black copper moran, right? So anyway, backyard chickens, fantastic. So I keep getting ahead of myself. I will either break my fast with eggs, olive, and ferments or leftover dinner and that combination. But if I'm going to lift legs, for example, or do a heavy chest day or do a back day, I like to have some carbs periodically and before pre-workout or post-workout. Um, I think the timing is not so important, you know, uh, when it comes to carbohydrate intake and exercise. So this is an example 
of some of the carbs. We have some fingerling potatoes from our backyard, okay? So we grow potatoes, yes we do. Uh, and then we also have some squash right from the backyard. So this is a butternut squash, tastes phenomenal. You put a little butter and honey on there. I know it's not low carb, but it tastes fantastic. So when it comes to carbs, proteins, and macronutrients, the easiest way to sort of wrap your mind around this is you wanna hold your protein fa fairly constant, right? Have Protein is sort of the base macronutrient. And then you oscillate the fat and the carbs based upon your activity level. If you're very lean and physically fit and more active, you, want, you can afford to have more carbohydrates. If you're not exercising, if you're not very physically active, you have less carbohydrates and a little bit more fat to hit your calorie intake so that you don't uh, shrivel away. Now, let's talk about some things like post-workout. What would I do maybe post-workout or maybe a little, uh, you know, it's a snack, I'm hungry, but I don't yet want a major meal. You know, it's like two or three o'clock. You know, I worked out at lunch, what would I do? I love this sort of protein sort of recipe. It, it's indulgent, this can also be a dinner recipe as well. I'll take some grass-fed whey from Myoscience, one of the best grass-fed ways that's undenatured out in there from New Zealand, phenomenal whey, and I'll mix that with some yogurt. We just happen to have this Kite Hill yogurt. It's made from almonds, you can do any other yogurt. If you're not dairy sensitive, you can, you can do dairy yogurt. But just like a quarter cup or a half cup of this, it thickens up the whey protein, mix that together, tastes phenomenal. You can also make your own nut milks using almonds or cashews or Brazil nuts or walnuts or whatever. Um, just you know, soak them overnight, put it in the Vitamix and strain it with a, a nut milk strainer. Uh, that tastes phenomenal as well. Um, if you do raw dairy from A2 cows, I'm totally cool with that. It's hard for us where we live right now to get raw dairy, so we, we don't do a lot of that, but periodically we do. Um, so that's like a, a really good snack. Your kids will love that as well. Um, so that's, that's super helpful. Now, uh, the other thing that I like to weave into the diet, now, unfortunately, olives are super expensive right now, um, but I love olives, I love nut butters, I love avocado. So that's where I get my fat macros from as well as from butter and coconut. And so that's something, again, to sort of fill in there because you're getting your protein. What you'll notice here outside of the eggs, no chicken. And you might say, well, why no chicken, Mike? I'm not a big fan of chicken for protein for a few different reasons. Number one, it's hard to totally have sort of a pasture-raised chicken without giving them grain. Chickens eat a lot of grain. I find that a lot of people are still sensitive to grain. They have uh, mold sensitivities and uh, autoimmune stuff. And as crazy as it sounds, getting uh, off some of the chicken products uh, can be helpful because you know, there might be some sort of cross-reactive immunologic triggering from consuming those different uh, animal products from animals eating grains. I know it sounds crazy, but um, Dr. Gundry has talked a lot about this over the years, and, and uh, I found this to be true with clients as well. So last but certainly not least, one of the things that we strive to cook with all the time is mushrooms. Mushrooms are rich in a lot of different immunological uh, factors, you can wild uh, catch mushrooms out, especially in the fall. You know, they're, they're popping up in, in the forest now, which is fantastic. So there's shiitake mushrooms, there's oyster mushrooms, there is uh, mataki. I mean, there's all sorts of mushrooms. In the spring, there's the morels. Uh, in the fall, there's chanterelles. So please go out and forage uh, mushrooms. And why I like mushrooms, number one, they're, they're, they taste good. They're good, they have a, a good source of protein. Uh, they're easy to digest and they're good for your immune system, which is important right now, especially as we get into the, the fall and the winter. Uh, and last but certainly not least, they're rich in a compound called spermidine. Spermidine has been shown to support the process of autophagy that many people are, are sort of chasing or striving to increase by way of exercise and fasting. Well, it turns out that spermidine is increased and, and there's high concentrations of spermidine in mushrooms. So yeah, that's basically it, friends. So as you see here, Protein heavy. Now, a lot of the, the vegan vegetarian folks might be like, well, Mike, I'm disappointed in your choice of foods, like all these things. And I understand, you know, sort of that argument, but I've just found after experimenting with so many different diets over the years, what helps give me vigor, vitality, strength, mental clarity, uh, and I, I don't get injured as often as eating this way. Um, you reduce, you know, people will say, well, your liver, well, what about your inflammatory response? My C-reactive protein is like 0.01. My liver enzymes are like 26, 27. Triglycerides are in their 60s. So it's hard to say this argument that eating this way is very problematic, knowing that, you know, over the years, I've been able to, I've been eating this way since like 2014, um, and knock on wood, have 
still ha yet to have any major health issues as a result of that. Um, so I like to have more of a balanced approach. Now, when it comes to sweets and treats and th things like that, um, Deanna will make some of these paleo donuts using almond flour or she's using this chestnut flour now periodically. So it's not every single day, but she'll follow her on Instagram. So we'll have something like this periodically, um, sweetened with honey or, or monk fruit. You know, so we try to eat low carb and all that, but you know, periodically make our own ice cream uh, with, with some protein or things like that. So it's not like super strict and we never, you know, I like to implement the 80-20 principle. We'll have wine on the weekends, uh, or an organic biodynamic wine from Italy, uh, you know, things like that. So it's not too regimented, but you're not seeing chips and processed carbs. Although when I was younger, we basically lived on off that stuff, but not anymore, friends. So uh, also for cooking with, with fat, I like uh, organic cold pressed olive oil and then grass fed butter as well. So we're cooking with that. That's, you know, we're not using canola oil or soy oil or anything, but as you can see here, um, the challenge with meat though, meat is getting very expensive. The price of meat has increased about 50% in the last several months. So this is where, you know, reaching out to a local grass fed farmer, buying in bulk, uh, investing in a freezer can be helpful. Uh, because if you, if you keep going to Costco and your grocery store, you're going to be paying a lot more and you, and you do uh, save when you buy directly from the farmer. Okay. So. I know that video was a little bit all over the place, but again, we're having two meals a day. That's just what I do. For me, sometimes I'll have a protein shake in between, especially on hard workout days. Um, I don't track macros, I don't count calories. Over the years, I haven't gained weight, haven't lost weight, but hovered around you know, 185, 190, um, eating this way. So find that sweet spot. You know, I'm not saying tracking macros is a bad idea. I'm just, um, I don't wanna every single day just be regimented and dogmatic about counting calories. I eat you know, based upon my satiety, hunger levels, and activity levels. So following a more intuitive approach seems to work for me. And when you don't have all those ultra processed, hyper palatable foods, you can just you know, sort of be more satiated on real foods and you're not one to always snack and over consume and overindulge some of those foods. So hopefully that was helpful. If it was, you can hit that like button. If you have any comments or questions or you wanna critique my diet, feel free in the comments below. Like I said, I mean, I don't think everyone should eat this way. Um, my daughter is totally happy and growing well and uh, physically active and, and all of this eating this way, you know, um, and we're all relatively lean and low blood pressure and the whole thing. So um, I understand there's different strokes for different folks and this, this is what works for us. And hopefully you can learn a tip or two and tweak your diet, um, you know, uh, if, if you found this video helpful. But again, not a lot of oatmeal, not a lot of rice. Periodically we'll do rice in the summer but I just find it's easier, more satiating if you, if you hit that protein target and then oscillate the fats and carbs based upon your physical fitness and activity. So friends, thanks for tuning all the way in. Hopefully you found it helpful. Thanks for that like button and let me know what you think in the comment section below. We'll catch you all soon. Bye now.